nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, and then shall the end come. Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Here's today's prophecy update. Iran's defense minister said last week that his country would soon unveil the recent improvements in its EMOD ballistic missile and that Iran would start receiving Russian S-300 ground-to-air missile systems within two months. The Pentagon, which determined that the EMOD can carry a nuclear warhead, has recommended that the Treasury Department and the UN impose economic sanctions on individuals and companies engaged in trade with Iran's missile development industry. Meanwhile, the Iranian media said Tehran and Moscow had launched talks on the sale of the Sukhoi Su-30 jets to the Iranian Air Force. The FARS news agency quoted Iran's commander-in-chief as saying, Iran's missile capability and its missile program will become stronger. We do not pay attention and do not implement resolutions against Iran, and this is not a violation of the nuclear deal. He was referring to Iran's deal with world powers last year to curb a nuclear program that the West feared, despite Tehran's denials, was aimed at acquiring atomic weapons. Our missile program is not a threat against our friends, but it is a threat against our enemies. Israel should understand what it means, Salihai said. This warning is especially ominous when we realize the Bible specifically prophesies that Iran will invade Israel a few years from now during the Battle of Armageddon. It also foretells that nuclear weapons will, in fact, be used at the time of Armageddon. Now, what we're going to do today, we're going to look at a lot of the breaking news stories all around us right now. And then we're going to compare them to what the Bible prophesies for the future. Some of the stories that are breaking right now that concern us are of no consequence because they're not ultimately going to come to pass. Others of the stories will come to pass and they have perhaps very impactful results for all of us. I just want all of us to understand how much a working knowledge of Bible prophecy helps us to know what is important and to understand the way world events are unfolding right now. Now, in order to look at all this, I want to go through some of the latest breaking stories, the present situation that we're in right now. Russia and the U.S. have just now moved in to alliance. They just signed an agreement last week at Munich. They're going to cooperate in the Middle East. They've decided that Russia will oversee all of the area west of the Euphrates River, that the United States will be in charge of all the area east of the Euphrates River. Now, it's a little ominous just when the Bible prophesies a great war is going to emanate from the Euphrates, it's pretty awesome to read where the world's two greatest nuclear powers have now moved in to impose their will on this part of the world. So the question is, are we in fact seeing the lead up right now to the battle of, of 
World War III. It's the sixth trumpet battle as lined out in Revelation chapter number 13, or chapter number 9, verse number 13. So our question then is two things. Are we seeing the lead up to the sixth trumpet war? And secondly, what about this alliance all of a sudden between, this, between Russia and the United States of America? Is this going to be a permanent alliance that will end up dominating the world in these end times or not? Well, here's what we know for sure. The war is coming from the Euphrates River area. Nobody can change it. It's recorded in the scriptures and the prophecies of the Bible always come to pass. The Bible records this war that will emanate from the Euphrates River that will end up killing one third of mankind. Now that's a horrific prophecy. Think about this. One third of mankind. There are seven billion people on this planet right now. One third would be about 2.4 billion. Think about that. It's almost incomprehensible. I mean, let's look at World War I, 8.2 million dead. World War II, 52 million dead. Now multiply World War II, the greatest war ever, by 40 times, 2.4 billion. One person out of three on this planet is going to die as a result of a war emanating out of the Euphrates River. And all of a sudden, we're seeing Russia and the U.S. side by side. Where is it going to lead? I can tell you there's going to be a war that's going to kill one-third of mankind and it's going to emanate from the Euphrates River. Can I tell you that this present situation is the trigger that's going to launch this whole war? I can't tell you that for sure. I can simply tell you it's coming. If this present situation is not the precursor to that war, it's going to miss a mighty good chance. I mean, after all, ISIS has captured close to 50% of the Euphrates River over the last two years. And now all of a sudden you have not only Russia and the U.S., but the U.S. has announced that NATO is going to be involved. And also the U.S. has put together a coalition of 65 nations plus Russia, plus Iran, so the militaries of the world are converging on the Euphrates River right now. Is it time for that war? It looks like to me it is. Will it be yet this year? Very possible. Will perhaps Barack Obama hold off until the next president has to deal with this volatile situation? I can't tell you for sure, but there's one more thing that I do want to tell you before we go to our next point. Will this alliance between the United States and Russia endure? Is that going to be the power structure of the reign of the Antichrist in the end times? The answer to that is absolutely not. Now, how do we know that from Bible prophecy? Most of you that listen to this program, you're familiar with the prophecy of Daniel 7, how that Great Britain is the lion, Russia is the bear, the United States of America is the eagle, Germany is the leopard, and the tin-horned beast is that final beast that's uh, going to come out of the reborn Holy Roman Empire, the European Union. So we know what those powers are, all prophesied 2,500 years ago, but on earth right now. Now when we move to the New Testament, we see a picture of the end time one world government. And these powers the lion, the bear, the leopard, and the ten-horned beast are all in a single beast. In Daniel 7, there are four separate beasts, and the Bible says that the beasts are kingdoms or nations. So there's four separate nations prophesied, but when we transition 650 years later to the New Testament, a prophecy about the kingdom of the Antichrist. I'm talking about the, the end time one world government that's in formation right now through a process we call globalization. That empire is not going to be four separate beasts. They've now merged into one beast with the body of the leopard, the feet of the bear, the mouth of the lion, the ten horns of the ten horn kingdom. So this shows us then 
that all these powers will merge together. But what does it also tell us about the relationship of Russia to the United States? No eagle's wings in Revelation 13. Where did the United States go? Apparently, the U.S. is not going to be an integral part of the end time one world government. Now it does appear the U.S. is going to be involved in this war that's going to kill one third of mankind. And it also appears that this war will be the entrance ramp for the Antichrist to ascend to power. I mean, you think of the chaos. You, you talk about people burying masses with bulldozers. That's what they'll be doing. You can't bury 2.4 billion people fast enough. Whole nations are going to be obliterated from the planet. There is going to be such a ground a groundswell call for somebody to lead us into a new path, into peace. It's going to be the perfect entrance ramp for the leader called the Antichrist. He will come to power. And his power base is going to be made up of Germany, Russia, Great Britain, and the reborn Holy Roman Empire called the European Union. So we know that for certain. It's right there in the Bible written 2,000 years ago, but coming to pass today. But guess what's not there? The eagle's wings are dropped. Go from Daniel 7, Revelation 13, no eagle's wings. So do the eagle's wings show up anyplace else? Yes, they do. One chapter before, Revelation chapter number 12. We see there a woman with 12 stars about her head. The 12 stars represent the 12 tribes of Israel. The woman is Israel. And the woman gives birth to a child, the Messiah. The Messiah is caught up to God and to his throne. And then it skips 2,000 years. And he gives us a picture of the final three and a half years from verse 6 to verse 17 is a description of events that will happen during the final three and a half years, that period of time called the Great Tribulation. And during that final three and a half years, Satan is confined to the earth and he wrecks havoc upon the people of the world. He launches the time called the Great Tribulation. And his main focus for the Great Tribulation is going to be Israel. Yes, there's another Holocaust coming. And I hate to tell the people of Israel that, but it is true. But if they will listen, they can escape. The Bible clearly prophesies in Daniel 12, verse number 1, that there will be a time of trouble such as never has been before, nor ever again shall be. There's 1.6 million Jews in Europe today. They need to every single one get out as quickly as they possibly can. And that's the reason we started the Another Jewish Holocaust Fund here because we want every single Jew that's in Europe to get out because it's going to be back to the days of Adolf Hitler. When the Antichrist takes over, the Bible says that he's going to make war against the woman with the 12 stars about her head. He is going to make war against the Jewish people once again. But it also says there in Revelation chapter 12, verse 14, there will be given to the woman Israel two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into her place where she will be nourished from the face of the serpent for time, times, and half a time. Won't take time to prove it right now, but that's biblical terminology for three and a half years. A time is one year, times is two years, half a time is half of a year. The great tribulation lasts for three and one half years. And the Bible says the eagle is going to protect Israel all during that three and a half years. But the Jewish people that are not in Israel or in the United States of America are going to be greatly endangered. Then shall be a time of trouble such as never has been before nor ever again shall be. So, so when we look at this alliance, this new amazing alliance between Russia and the United States of America, what does the prophecies tell us? This is a temporary alliance, but Russia is going to be on the side of the Antichrist during the Great Tribulation, and America is going to be protecting Israel from the Antichrist during the Great Tribulation. Now that's good no news for us that are here in the United States of America. But isn't it amazing 
how that we can see one article in the paper and we can start asking these questions from a prophetic viewpoint, we can know what's going to happen. Now, there's another recent development over the last few months. That is that Russia and Iran have moved into Syria to prop up the regime of Bashar al-Assad. So the question is, where's this going to go then? Well, we don't have to guess. In Ezekiel chapter number 38, there's a prophecy there of the nations that will invade Israel at the time of the battle of Armageddon. Gog, Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. If you look in an unabridged dictionary under Meshach, it'll tell you it's the root word for Moscovy or Moscow. Also, the Tobol River is in Russia. So this is a prophecy that Russia is going to be one of the principal enemies of Israel. Now, right now, Israel's sort of playing footsie under the table with Russia. Bad thing to do. Russia is not going to be your friend. Russia is going to end up being the leading invader under a UN flag at the Battle of Armageddon. It also states in the passage that Persia will come down with Russia. Iran was called Persia until 1935. They've changed their name. Their main body of water is still called the Persian Gulf. And many times Iran is referred to Persia. Russia and Iran are going to invade Israel during the Battle of Armageddon. And all of a sudden, amazingly, we see Russian troops in Syria just north of Israel. Israel shares a border with Syria. And we see Iranian troops. They're both there. Now, the invasion at Armageddon is not going to be for at least seven years, maybe eight, nine, or ten. We don't know yet for sure. But we know for certain that Iran is going to invade Israel at the time of the Battle of Armageddon. So when we read these news reports, we have access to this wonderful knowledge from Bible prophecy, and that's the reason that every person in the world should acquire a working knowledge of Bible prophecy. We put together 14 DVDs that can help you do that. If you go through these 14 DVDs, the course is called Understanding the End Time. You will really understand it. And when you go through this course, you will end up knowing more about Bible prophecy than 95% of the graduates from theological seminary. And you'll never read your newspaper. You'll never listen to your news again, just like we're doing today. You can go through every item because let me tell you, God is not on vacation He's not asleep at the wheel. God has got his fingers in everything that's going on in this earth right now. After all, shouldn't he? It's his world. He created it. Okay, let's continue on. Another story breaking. Obama administration is moving away from Israel. This particular story has broken that we are now going to reduce. Let me give you the exact amount because I want you to see it for yourself. They are getting ready to reduce our contributions uh, to Israel. Let me see if I got it, because I want you to see uh, exactly how much it is. It's rather alarming. Well, oh, here we go. America's defense contractor, Raytheon, and Israel's defense contractor, Raphael, have been working together on two projects. One is called Iron Dome, and the other one is called David's Sling. Now, the budget that was appropriated for David's Sling development was $268 million. It's now being cut to $104 million. They're axing it by about two-thirds. I'm talking about the Obama administration. Now, all of us have known that Obama's no friend of Israel. However, he's tried to make us believe the opposite is true. Then it goes on to say that while the budget for the Iron Dome missile defense system is to be reduced from 55 million to 42 million, we're talking about the Iron Dome defense mechanism that in the last skirmish in 2014, all the incoming missiles Iron Dome nailed nearly every one of them. Well, that's been a joint venture between Israel and the United States of America. 
So a lot of us are looking at stories like this saying, hey, President Obama's pulling the rug out from under Israel at a most critical and strategic time. So will this action hold? We're in the mix of a hot presidential election right now. Will we elect someone that will turn the tide back from this move away from Israel and back to our traditional pro-Israeli stance that we've had since the birth of Israel in 1948? Well, it's going to be reversed. Revelation 12, 14 specifically states that the eagle is going to protect Israel all during the Great Tribulation. It doesn't say just Israel either, by the way. But there's another passage, Daniel chapter 11, verse 41, that states that Edom, Moab, and the children of Ammon will escape out of the hand of the Antichrist. The country of Jordan will never be occupied by the Antichrist. Edom is southern Jordan. That's the area called Petra. The Moab Mountains are still called the Moab Mountains in central Jordan. I see them every time I go to Israel. And then Amman, Jordan, the children of the Ammonites is Amman. That's their capital city. Uh, we were touring Jordan a few years back. And we had a real nice guide, a Jordanian. And he told us that he lived in Amman. I said, so does that mean that you're an Ammonite? He said, absolutely. Well, here this prophecy is concerning the three and a half year reign of the Antichrist stating that southern Jordan, middle Jordan, and the capital Jordan will escape out of the hand of the Antichrist. It's so amazing when I pick up stories like Jordan, Jordanian pilots coming to America together with Israeli pilots having joint training. As a matter of fact, one Jordanian pilot refused to come. He said, I, I enlisted to fight Israel, not to be a friend of Israel. And so what did Jordan do? They put him out with a dishonorable discharge. They said, Israel's our friend. A man in northern Jordan who hates Israel put a flag on the doorstep of his business, an Israeli flag, so people would wipe their feet on it. The Jordanian government came and arrested him and said, we don't treat our friends this way. The Bible prophesies that Jordan, Israel, and the United States will be in alliance in the middle of the time of the Antichrist reign. Once we know these things from Scripture, then will we see what's happening? Now, I cannot predict to you who's going to win the presidential election, but I can tell you, before it's over with, America is going to turn back and remain a faithful friend to the nation of Israel. Do you realize that we cast the deciding vote on November the 29th of, 2000, or of 1947 when the United Nations took its vote to create the nation of Israel? It took 31 votes to create two-thirds at the United Nations. It was much smaller back in those days. Guess who the 31st vote was? the eagle, the United States of America. Then, when Israel on May the 14th of 1948 declared her independence, guess which nation was the first to recognize the new nation? 11 minutes after David Ben-Gurion declared the independence of the state of Israel, the United States of America stepped forward and we were the first nation to recognize. Now, since that time, the UN has largely become anti-Israeli. They've tried to pass resolutions continually against Israel. But the United States of America has veto power. There are five nations that have absolute veto power on all the actions at the UN Security Council. Those five are the victor nations of World War II. United States, Great Britain, France, Russia, China. If any one of those nations vote against a UN Security Council resolution, it's dead. It doesn't matter if the other 14 member nations vote for it. Those nations have absolute veto power. The United States has used its veto power 41 times since 1972. The eagle, in fact, is hovering over Israel to protect Israel. And according to the Bible, will continue to do that all during the Great Tribulation. Like I said before, if you do not have a working knowledge of Bible prophecy, 
then a lot of what you read and a lot of what you listen to in the news is going to go right over your head. But once you go through our course, Understanding the End Time, 14 one-hour DVDs, you will understand the end time. If, if When you're done with the course, you don't agree with me, send it right back. We'll, record, we'll restore your donation, whatever amount it may be, in full. Because I'm telling you, every person on this planet needs this course right now. Because if you don't have it, you're really functioning blind. We're headed into the most troubled times in the history of the world. But you don't have to go in blindfolded. You can go in with your eyes wide open and you can actually have a map in your hand showing you where all the mines are so that instead of this becoming a time, a negative time for you, it can become a time of great excitement. Plus, you can do the work of God in these times just ahead. Because if you know what's going on, the Bible says the sons of Issachar were men who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. It's not God's will for you to be bumbling along blindly in this most critical time that's just ahead. But Jesus said, I tell you these things before they come to pass so that when they do come to pass, you might believe. Now, let me remind you, tomorrow evening, Tuesday, February the 16th, a very special prophecy conference at the North City's Pentecostal Church. I will be speaking on From Here to Armageddon and the world's greatest revival just ahead. I'm going to prove it to you. Don't miss it. It's at 7.30 tomorrow night, 502 Beltline, Garland, Texas. It is going to be an extraordinary time. You will see exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to list them plainly for you and give you scripture. All the events that will happen between right now and the Battle of Armageddon. So you're invited. There's no charge to attend. 502 Beltline, Garland, Texas, tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m. This trip was a special experience for me. My study of the Bible has been enhanced after seeing Israel. The guides and planners for this trip did an excellent job of taking care of us. The hotels and furnished meals were top notch. This is a trip of a lifetime. Sign up and go. Bert from Arizona. Come with us as we walk in the footsteps of Jesus and learn about the end time story on our Israel Holy Roman Empire tour. The Bible prophesies that the Antichrist and false prophet will come out of the Holy Roman Empire. We will be touring the capital of the European Union in Brussels, Belgium, where the rebirthed Holy Roman Empire was fulfilled. We will also visit the Charlemagne Cathedral in Aachen, Germany, who was the first emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. We will be touring the Hall of the Caesars in Frankfurt, Germany, and much more. When we get to Israel, we will see the Mount of Olives, the Garden Tomb, the Temple Institute, Bethlehem, the Western Wall, the Sea of Galilee, the Mount of the Beatitudes, and more. Irvin and Judy hope you will come with them and experience the Israel Holy Roman Empire tour to share one of their favorite places on earth with you. Call 1-800-END-TIME or go to endtime.com for more information. If your radio station only carries the first 30 minutes of End of the Age, go to endtime.com to continue to listen to today's broadcast. I've got to tell you, if ever in your life you want to go to Israel, the trip that leaves here on March the 24th through April the 8th, it's a 16-day trip. It is the one you want to go on because we're not only going to the Holy Land where Jesus will return to, but we're going to Europe, to the reborn Holy Roman Empire where the Antichrist and the false prophet will come from. I mean, you talk about the trip of a lifetime. I know we use that term sometimes, but this is it. If you can do it, 
now would be the time. So don't wait because we're almost against our deadline. If you're interested, call us 1 800 in time. That's 1 800 363 8463. Just simply ask to speak to someone about the tour. Uh, well, let's get back to our subject here, and then a little bit, bit later on, I'm going to be taking your phone calls. But right now, this new story is breaking. Russia and Israel are signing a free trade agreement. Now, here's what's happening. Europe is turning against Israel, as the Bible says she will, because Europe's going to be the power base of the Antichrist, and the Antichrist is going to hate Israel. It's going to be Adolf Hitler all over again. So since Europe now has decided that any product produced by Israel in what they call the occupied territories in the West Bank area, it must not bear the name Israel, but it must bear the name settlements so that people can boycott it. Well, Israel sees the handwriting on the wall, so they're now moving as fast as they can to create other markets for their goods. Russia has responded and they just recently have signed a peace or a, a trade agreement with Israel. Now, here's the big question. Since we know that Russia is going to invade, invade Israel at the Battle of Armageddon, is this friendship going to last? What should we make of all this? Well, the bottom line is the friendship is not going to last. Like I told you early in the program, Russia is going to invade Israel at the time of the Battle of Armageddon. Now, we have another story breaking about Iran. Iran is testing missiles right now. Is it for a future attack on the nation of Israel? Now, I just recently mentioned to you what this article states, I'm looking at an article right now, Iran Army Chief, missile program, a threat to our enemies. Israel should know what that means. This is in the Jerusalem Post just last week. And here's the quote exactly. Our missile program is not a threat against our friends, but it is a threat against our enemies. Israel should understand what it means. It's a not so subtle threat. We right now, are developing missiles that can carry nuclear weaponry into the nation of Israel. And these are designed for our enemies and Israel should understand what we're saying. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Israel does understand, but President Obama with his agreement with Iran sold Israel down the river. So what's the result going to be? Iran and Russia are going to invade Israel for the Battle of Armageddon. And will there be nuclear weapons used during the Battle of Armageddon? Absolutely. Zechariah 14, 12 specifically states that there will be nuclear weapons used. The Bible says, this is the plague wherewith I will smite all those that come against Jerusalem. Their eyes will be consumed in their sockets. Their tongues will be consumed in their mouths. Their flesh will will fall off the bone. It's an exact description of nuclear radiation. Now the big question is, will that be Iranian nukes that cause that? Or will that be Israeli nukes that cause that? Because Israel has, it's been estimated, 200 nuclear warheads lock loaded and ready to go. They call their nuclear power the Samson option. Now, if you know your Bible, you know that Samson was a great deliverer of Israel who ended up, because of his sin and disobedience, getting his eyes poked out and ended up in captivity to the Philistines and they put him at a, at a mill grinding corn like an ox. However, after years of that, toward the latter part of his life, God answered his prayer to restore his power. He said, God avenge me of my two eyes. And he asked the young man that was leading him around because he was blind, would you allow me to go over and rest against the two main pillars of the house? I'm tired. And when he prayed that prayer, the Bible says he bowed himself and was able to pull the supporting pillars down. All of the leaders of the Philistines were there 
It's a big annual party. They were making fun of Samson. He brought the whole house down. And the Bible says those that he killed in his death were more than those that he killed in his life. Israel knows that story like the back of their hand. And they call their nuclear capability the Samson option. You know what they're saying? If we're going down, we'll take the whole house down with us. Now they promised we will not use our nuclear option unless the existence of the state of Israel is threatened. Well, the Bible teaches that the state of Israel is going to be threatened during the Battle of Armageddon. As a matter of fact, half of the city of Jerusalem is going to fall. Now, I don't know whether Iran fires nukes and misses and hits their own troops or whether Israel fires troops and punishes those people that are coming. I, all I can tell you is the Bible says, this is the plague wherewith I will smite all those that come against Jerusalem. Their eyes will be consumed in their sockets, their tongues in their mouths, and their flesh will fall off the bone. So is Iran going to attack Israel? Absolutely. Will there be nuclear weapons in that exchange, the battle called Armageddon? Yes, there will be. So again, we see these stories, all these stories have broken in the last week. And yet, God's right in the middle of the whole thing. There's at least one more I want you to look at. There's a lot of debate going on right now about the two-state solution because the settlers have grown to about 800,000 people out in the West Bank area, the area called Judea Samaria. Many people are saying, look, the two-state solution is dead. It's never going to work. Now, here's the big question. This is a question that advisors to the State Department can't answer right now. It's a question that President Obama cannot answer right now. But if you know your Bible, you can answer it. Is there going to be a two-state solution? Absolutely. The Bible clearly prophesies that the area called Judea, which is the West Bank, the Jews call it Judea Samaria, that's the territory that was captured by Israel from the Jordanians in the 1967 war. The Bible clearly states that that's going to be under the control of Israel's enemies. And halfway through the final seven years, at the time of the abomination of desolation, the Bible says the people living in Judea will have to run for their lives. Jesus himself gave the prophecy. This is Matthew chapter number 24. He said there, When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place on the temple mount, when you see the Antichrist stand on the Temple Mount claiming to be Messiah, claiming to be God. When you see that, then if you live in Judea, you better hit the ground running. If you're on your housetop, don't come down to grab your clothes. If you're out in the field, don't come back to get your billfold. Hit the ground running because then will be great tribulation such as never been before, no, nor ever again shall be. So what am I telling you? I'm telling you that there were no Jews living in Judea prior to 67. The Jordanians had driven them all out. However, once Israel drove the Jordanians out back across the Jordan River and took this territory that's an integral part of the promised land, once that occurred, the Jews began to obey God because God said, when I bring you to the land that I promised to your father Abraham, you are to occupy the land. So the Jews said, that's what God tells us to do. They went out and they began to build homes and, which became settlements, which became towns. Now then they're towns of 30, 40, 50,000 people. And they're out there in that area, but the pressure is on Israel to give this territory to the Palestinians. Israel is going to cave. She shouldn't. Because God said, don't you give away any of the land I promise you. But because Israel is going to be afraid, her unbelief is going to cause her to do what she should not do. And she's going to yield this territory to the Palestinians because the pressure from the United States, pressure from the United Nations, pressure from the European Union, they're going to yield. If they knew their prophecies, they would never do this. And when they yield, the Bible says you seek to save your life, you'll lose it. That's exactly what's going to happen. All those Jews out there that 
There's 800,000 of them right now if you count the ones living in East Jerusalem. Some of them are going to be kept within the borders of Israel, but probably four or 500,000 of them are going to stay and live as a Jewish minority in the Palestinian state. The logic goes like this. They've already discussed all this. The logic says, look, we've got 1.6 million Arabs living as an Arab minority in the Jewish state. Why can't we have two or three or 400,000 Jews living as a Jewish minority under the Palestinian state? They're going to foolishly believe that and it's going to work for the first three and a half years. But then all of a sudden, everything's going to come loose. And Jesus said, if you live in Judea, you run for your life because then will be great tribulation such as never has before, never been before, no, nor ever again shall be. Now, in our last segment, I want to give you time. I want to go to the phones now. I'd like for our technicians to prepare to receive your phone calls. If you'd like to be on the air with me, the number to call is 877-END-TIME. That's 877-363-8463. Or if you need to reach our operators, perhaps you want to... Uh, order the Understand the End Time series, or perhaps you would like to do uh, other things. Maybe you'd like to sign up for our trip to Israel, whatever the case may be. Uh, that number is 1 800 End Time, but to reach me, 877 End Time. We're going to take as many of your calls as we can. I'll tell you what, let's do. I think we can get uh, one call in here very quickly. Let's go now, right now, to David. David's calling from here in Texas. Hello, David. What's on your mind? Uh, hello, Urban. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Welcome. Uh, I'm uh, I'm really uh, hoping that what we're saying on the uh, on the eagle is the USA helping Israel, and that brings us away from where we're going. Uh, my worry is I go back to to Exodus, and when Moses uh, told us in Exodus like 194, uh, he used a comment where God told him that he brought them out on eagles' wings. The exact words, huh? Uh, which didn't involve the USA. It worries me that um, maybe we're relying too heavily on those words being USA. Could now, let me, be, but... let me respond to you real quick, David, because we're getting close to a break. Yeah. I understand what you're saying, and yes, back in Exodus, it is a metaphor. However, when you put all the facts together, the fact that Jordan will never be under the control of the Antichrist, that Israel will never be under the control of the Antichrist, and that the eagle is Israel's best friend and Jordan's best friend in the Middle East, and the fact that the eagle, in fact, has been Israel's best friend ever since its rebirth in 1948. In my opinion, we've got a really strong case to say that this usage of the eagle's wings in Revelation chapter number 12 is, in fact, the United States of America. Sorry to cut you off, David, but we're up against a break. You're listening to End of the Age. Don't forget, Great Prophecy Conference tomorrow night, 7.30 uh, at the uh, North City's Pentecostal Church, 502 Beltline. You're invited. Study prophecy wherever you go with End Times audio downloads. Listen to one-hour lessons like Will Islam Rule the World or Seeds of Armageddon for just $4.99. Let your imagination and your understanding of prophecy dive into the end time novels like China War in the Third Temple and Dark Intentions written by Irvin Baxter. Maybe you feel bombarded by what's going on in the news and you want to just hear some good old-fashioned preaching. We have tons of sermons taught by Irvin that are rich in truth. You can go through our entire Understanding the End Time series while driving to work, cooking dinner, or wherever your busy day takes you. Let our audio library accompany you by going to endtime.com slash store and click the audio downloads. The world's greatest revival just ahead. America's God-given destiny, breaking prophetic fulfillments, and the great tribulation. With topics such as these, you are not going to want to miss upcoming End Time Prophecy Conferences. Irvin Baxter will be traveling to many cities where he'll be teaching these exciting lessons. To those of you in Garland and Hearst, Texas, Sewanee, Georgia, and Brooklyn, Arkansas, he'll be heading your way soon. Come meet our End Time team and other people like you who want to learn what God has in store in the days ahead. View our wide selection of prophecy materials and take end time lessons home to share with family and friends. We hope you will come and be encouraged gaining new understanding as prophecy continues to unfold. Go to endtime.com and under events, click the conference link or call 1 800 end time to find more details about these conferences. We'll see you there.
We're coming right back to the phones, and I hope you'll keep your questions sharp and to the point. I'll try to do the same with my answers. We have a full bank of callers, so I want to get to you all. Let's go right now to Arkansas. Chris is calling. Hello, Chris. Hey, Brother Baxter, can you hear me? I hear you well. What's on your mind? Hey, uh, I got a question. I think it's Revelation chapter 6 where the angel Apollyon opens up the bottomless pit, and I, I, I'm pretty sure that you say that that is was Saddam Hussein who opened up the oil field. Question, though, if that's the same angel, isn't it, that also has the two witnesses killed? Is that right? I don't know for certain, but I can look here in just a moment for you. Um, and it, it kind of got me a little bit confused the, because... The time difference between, of course, Saddam Hussein and the two witnesses. Okay, I'm looking. Just give me another moment here. I'm looking for the scripture. Okay. Um, oh, it says there, and the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. So it doesn't necessarily say that it's the exact same angel. Here's here's the way I see this, and this is not the easiest prophecy to understand. But in okay. verse number one. It talks about, the first of all, the word angel is sometimes translated messenger. Uh, that's true in the second chapter and the third chapter of Revelation. But uh, in chapter number nine, that's where the angel opened the bottomless pit and the sun and the sky were darkened. I'll never forget when I saw in Time Magazine the uh, results of Saddam Hussein. He's pulling out of Kuwait and he set 700 of the world's richest oil wells on fire. The sun and the air, the sky and the sun were not seen for over three months. It took them a total of 10 months to put out all those fires. Uh, then it goes on to say in verse number 11, and the king that opened the bottomless pit, his name is Abaddon or Apollyon. And if you look yes. that up, it's both of them say the destroyer. Well, mm -hmm. the name Saddam is Arabic for the destroyer. Now, it's amazing that Saddam Hussein is the one who did it. And the Bible specifically said, if you were reading in the Arabic language, it would say, and the king over them was a man by the name of Saddam. So uh, even though it has some difficulties, I still think it's unavoidable. I think it's talking about the Gulf crisis of 1991. That's my opinion. Okay. Okay. That's what I wanted to know. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. God bless. Uh, Let's go now to Jeremiah calling from Kentucky. Hello, Jeremiah. Hello. Uh, I'll try to make this quick. Uh, in Daniel 7, you have the eagle, eagle's wings and you have the wings of a fowl. And then in Revelation, um, both of those are absent. Uh, I know that you say the eagle's wings represent America not being a part of the one world government. Uh, is there any answer on the fowl's wings? Yes, there actually is. For many years, I did not know what the wings of the fowl on the back of the leopard meant. But one day I came across the information. Uh, you know, there's this Franco-German alliance that has been responsible for rebuilding Europe since World War II. They now have built Europe into a powerhouse called the European Union. It's the mightiest trading force on the face of the earth right now. Well, uh, I stumbled across the information that the official emblem of France is the rooster, which of course is a fowl. So when you see the leopard Germany with the wings of a fowl, in my opinion, that is depicting the Franco-German alliance. And like you properly point out, not only does it not say the eagle's wings are in Revelation 13, it also does not mention the wings of the fowl. So that leaves the question open, what happens to France since the official emblem of France is the rooster? I'm not sure I can answer that question. I don't know. You know, you have to take circumstantial evidence to try to say, okay, the eagle's wings are not there. Does that mean we won't be involved? Well, if we didn't have other scriptures, I don't think I could say that. But if you go in the immediately previous chapter, chapter number 12, and see that the eagle is defending Israel against the world government that's depicted in Revelation 13 against the Antichrist and his one world government. When you see the eagle is fighting against, then that explains to me why the eagle's wings are not 
shown as an integral part of the combo beast of Revelation 13. I don't know of anything in Scripture, maybe there's something I haven't overlooked, but I don't, know, I don't know of anything in Scripture that mentions the foul again. So I don't know for sure what's going to happen to France. France has traditionally been somewhat of a free spirit during the days of de Gaulle. Uh, it sort of did its own thing. So I cannot tell you for certain what's going to happen to France, but I do believe that we know what's going to happen to the eagle's wings. Uh, all right, thank you. Yeah, I, I was just wondering about France. So, uh. Yeah, well, I, I'm sorry I can't give you a total answer. If I were guessing, yeah. France is so much involved with the European Union, I would guess that they just failed to mention it there, but I'm not sure. Uh, but I do know for certain that the Eagle's Wings do show up as fighting against the Antichrist and his one world government, which gives me a lot of excitement. Okay, uh, let's right, go. Sir. Thank you very much, Jeremiah. Let's keep moving here. Let's go now to Jane calling from Georgia. Hello, Jane. Hello, Irvin. I was just wondering, you know how I really don't believe there are any accidents. Um, I think everything is an act of God. And I was just wondering if perhaps, maybe because Donald Trump's last name is Trump, and it's about time for the sixth Trump war, if maybe he might be the one that will be elected. And since his daughter married a Jewish guy, maybe that would soften their whole family's heart toward Jews and Israel. And maybe if you could send your literature to every brother, sister, spouse, and everybody that maybe they could hear what the Bible says. And I'll take my answer off the air. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jane. And I've not done any research. If Donald Trump is Donald Trump the sixth, then you sure would possibly have a point. I doubt seriously that that is related, but uh, we do know for certain that at the sounding of the sixth trumpet, we're going to have an unprecedented war as it's described in Revelation chapter number nine, verse 13 through 21. Um, now, some people think that Donald Trump would be the type of a guy that could get us into that war. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, that's all supposition at this point. To hear many of the prognosticators tell it, he don't have a chance of being elected, uh, even though he continues to presently outstrip all of his opponents two to one. We don't know what's going to happen there. I'll tell you what, though, seriously, every one of us ought to be humbly praying that God will give us the leader in this next election that he wants us to have not even the one we want. We need to ask God, raise up that person that you want us to have because America does need to reverse the way we've been going. We need to retrace our steps and once again become the friend uh, to Israel that God would have us to be. So that's the best I can tell you about that. Uh, let's go now to Amin calling from Germany. Hello, Amin. Hi, um Hi, Mr. Baxter. I'm very nice to speak with you after a long time. Thank uh, you. I uh, speak very uh, quick, so because I know you have no time. Uh, we have no time. Yes, I was um, many weeks not listening to your show, and then today I was reading a little bit news, and then I was uh, reading the news. I um, yeah, I read it. Um, Erdogan, Turkey won't won't allow Syrian Kurdish PYD to west uh, of Euphrates, and. Um, yeah, the article is very interesting. It is saying that Turkey has not allowed and will not allow the Syrian Kurdish PYD, which is fighting Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, but has links to the outlaws PKK militant group in Turkey to cross west of Euphrates River. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan said on Friday. Yeah, it was for me very interesting. After a few weeks, I was not listening to your news, and then I saw this. I was uh, thinking, oh, man. Ooh, I must listening to this show. What is happening? <laughs> it's very interesting to read things like that, and you are preaching it every day. So yes, God bless you. It's, I respect your show very much, and I thank God for everything and all the service. And may God bless you, and um, you um, can continue as long as possible, even through the or till to the tribulation. God bless you, and bye bye. Thank you very much, Albin. And you bring up a very important point because. Turkey shot down a Russian plane a couple of months ago and Russia so far has not retaliated. Many people believe that Russia will not let that go 
without retaliation. And so there's a lot of nervousness right now. You've got Russia, the United States, and Turkey. Turkey's just across the border. That puts Russian troops in, within a mile or two of Turkey's troops. And there's a lot of animosity right now between Turkey and Russia. I don't know what's going to happen. The formula is certainly there for an explosion. But to be able to predict what's going to happen, all we know is this. Don't forget what the Bible says. There's a war coming out of that part of the world. There's no question about that. It's out of the Euphrates River area. Euphrates starts in Turkey, down through Syria, down through Iraq, empties out along the Persian, the Iranian border into the Persian Gulf. So a war is coming out of that area, the worst war the world has ever seen, and we may be in it already. Uh, but beyond that, sometimes we don't know exactly how it's going to happen. Sometimes the trigger will be something most unexpected. Nevertheless, I will tell you the answer, though. You need to be ready. All of us need to be ready. I live in Dallas. If America comes under direct attack from a major power, I could be blown away. So I have to be ready. Guess what? I want to die anyway. The only question is whether I die now or 10 years from now or next week. The Bible says, be ye also ready for in such an hour as you think not your Lord doth come. That's the most important thing I can say to you. Let me see. I wish I had time for another caller or two. Please call back tomorrow uh, because I'm out of time. Let me one more time. I want to make sure everybody hears this tell you, tomorrow night, February the 16th, I'm going to be conducting a very critical prophecy conference on from here to Armageddon. If you come to that conference, I'm going to lay out for you very clearly with supporting scripture of the events that you will witness between now and the battle of Armageddon, whether that's eight years, nine years, or 10 years. I cannot tell you exactly how long today. But we're going to be talking about that. And then a lot of people talk about all the horrible things that are coming and there are some bad things coming. But I'm going to be telling you about something wonderful and that is the Bible prophesies the greatest revival this world has ever known is going to happen during the next few years between here and the Battle of Armageddon. I'm going to be telling you about that revival, show you about it in the scripture and then tell you how you can be an integral part of that revival. God has a place for each of us. Now, if you need to come to the, the conference, the address is 502 Beltline, Garland, Texas, 730 on Tuesday night. Love to see you there. All of you are welcome. is a production of End Time Ministries. This broadcast will be available on our website, endtime.com, in the archive section. On our website, you'll also find more information about how current events are fulfilling Bible prophecy. To reach our operators, call 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463. End Time Ministries is partner-supported. We would like to say thank you to our partners who made this broadcast possible. To do what Matthew 24, 14 said, to reach the world with the gospel of the kingdom.